I'm going to talk about Foursquare for activism. Sorry, what did you say? OK. Um, so I'm going to start with a poem before I get going. Um, well, I'm going to have to remember it before I go ahead. Um, dreams escape as I try to reach into, this, into the distance and try to grasp vaporized hopes. My identity is questioned every day. They label me illegal alien. Hey, excuse me. If I jaywalk on the street, am I illegal? Excuse me, can, do I look like alien? No. <laughs> no. Okay. Um, why can I be just my smiles, my footsteps, and my conversation? My dreams are denied. My dreams of seeing my parents be able to afford doctors when they're sick from working under the table. My dreams of seeing my sister not be depressed when she's denied of opportunities for college because of her status. My dreams of seeing my strangers not be shackled in prison or deported away from their family just because they're parents. These dreams are denied, but still, my feet are grounded. Nine feet down in roots, my feet are grounded in, in the love that gave my parents the courage to cross the border, in the love that encouraged my immigrant neighbors to protest for our community, and in the love that allows me to speak out. Okay, I'm way behind my slides, but this is me, I'm um, doing a civil disobedience in Philly, and basically what we do is we go out, do a sit-in on the street, um, and to raise media attention to a person who's detained in prison. And so this is um, something that I did, and we all risk deportation and um, arrest because we're undocumented. And, um, and I started this because I was really inspired by my friend Maria, who did this first. And she, you can see like all the police over there. And she was sitting there because she she wanted to speak out against Georgia's law that prevents undocumented students from going to top five public universities. And Fernanda, who's my friend, who also did a civil disobedience in Alabama against their anti-immigration law. And these things really made me committed to the duty that I have to speak up for my community. And after my civil disobedience, these three people, they did their civil disobedience because they witnessed what I did and um, they were against the expansion of detention center in Philadelphia. So this is like a huge circle of passing torches of inspiration and there is a power of witnessing. And what does it have to do with technology at all? Um, it's because a, a lot of our activism came from Facebook, surprisingly, because we couldn't talk in person, like, hey, I'm undocumented. Let's talk about really deep stuff that influences my life. You can't do that. So people find each other online, and obviously we have, all have one of those phones, and we're all our um, technology can be really isolating, but at the same time, if you use it the right way, you know, you can meet people like, like this. We all found it online. Um, so I have this idea for an open source project, and it's a um, mobile app that basically has a calendar of community, um, community events, and it has a geolocation function so that it recommends you the perfect kind of community events nearby you, and um, you can also check in, and you get like a called supporter badge depending on what events you go to the most. Maybe you support LGBT or maybe you support immigrant rights. And so we can, this is a way to use technology in a way that brings together neighbors in, um, to organizing around causes that we're really affected. I mean, how many people in this room really knows the neighbors and the issues they're going through, like physical neighbors? The girl down the block over there, you know? So if you are interested in joining the cause, um,
get my email down and thanks for listening.